Hey there, this is Sam McKee again on the Polymath World channel, and we're doing another reaction video. Uh, this time we're addressing the claims of a Christian apologist called Dr. Frank Churek, who runs a ministry called Cross Examined. And he's going to unpack the four best arguments against evolution. So I don't know why I did this to myself. Basically, I did one, and now the algorithm thinks all I want to watch is creationists, intelligent design people attacking evolution. But here we go. There we are. Frank is, he holds a PhD in apologetics. So no science background whatsoever. His PhD is literally in arguing for his religious beliefs. So let's see. Frank Turek unpacks the best four arguments against evolution. I think macroevolution is false on the merits, not because of the Bible. Leave the Bible out of it for a minute. When you look at the evidence for macroevolution, I don't only think the evidence is weak for macroevolution. There is very strong evidence against it. Wow. What a start. You said you believe in an old earth. Yeah. Uh, that the Bible doesn't really prescribe a certain age of the earth so i would just want to know how you kind of knit together the idea of like old earth uh the genesis account perhaps even um evolution is there a historical adam whatnot good question of course i believe in historical adam and i think god created adam out of the dust just like it says makes a lot more sense than natural laws did it right <laughs> uh so yes uh, god created adam out of the dust when that happened i don't know makes uh, much more sense what was the other part of the question uh how does like um creation and um, evolution play into the uh, genesis well, well first of all or, i i think macroevolution is false on the merits not because of the bible leave the bible out of it for a minute interesting when you look at the evidence for macroevolution i not only think the evidence is weak for macroevolution there is very strong evidence against it oh dear okay i'll just give you a few real quickly with the acronym we're talking like, about no macroevolution again l stands for the fact that there's a limited capacity for change. Like, for example, uh, dog breeders try and breed dogs, right? And they get a dog as small as a Chihuahua and as large as a Great Dane. But even with all their intelligence, they can't break the genus of dogs. Why do we think a non-intelligent process can break that genus, can, can break those limits? Doesn't make any sense, right? The I stands for irreducible complexity. Oh, no. uh, Michael Behe introduced this oh, back in no. 1996 with his book, Darwin's Black Box, where he points out that there are so many aspects of uh, living things that you can't build gradually, that they're irreducibly complex, that all the pieces and all the parts have to be in place in working order to have any function at all. You can't get there gradually. Oh, dear. Like you can't get... Uh, you know, Richard Dawkins talked about, well, maybe our, uh, Dawkins, our eyes were developed through some sort of gradual process where we had at first uh, sort of light sensitive cells and then they evol eventually evolved into an eye. What Dawkins doesn't seem to realize is that light sensitive cells are irreducibly complex themselves and that to get to an eye, uh, light sensitive cells aren't a prerequisite to an eye and you'd have to have vision the whole way through That's with all rubbish. the parts there at the same time. So uh, it, it, eyes it are not a work. good example. The F stands for the fact that the fossil record does not comport with macroevolution. It, it comports with instantaneous creation because according to their dating, the Cambrian explosion, <laughs> where most major body phyla or body plants appear, they appear in the geological record about 530 million years ago in a geological instant. It looks more like creation rather than this long series of it gradual... It take five seconds to show... Mind. That that's not the case. Just this Google is a it. Great problem for Darwin. He said, "If my theory is true, why isn't the geological strata filled with all these intermediate fossils?" He said, "But don't worry, we'll investigate it, and we'll I'll be vindicated." Well, for the past 160 years, we've been investigating the fossil record, and Darwin isn't vindicated. Yeah, okay, it really there is are huge gaps in the fossil record, and E stands oh. for something known as epigenetic information, and that is. The idea that there are there are structures in the cell that are required for life and for the cell to function that can't be modified by mutating DNA. And you can't modify epigenetic information by mutating it. In other words, uh, maybe an analogy by that? would be the if you have a software program uh, in your uh, computer, say an architecture program to build a house you can come up with a plan to build the house 
But is the architecture program going to give you the nails, the wood, the lumber, the concrete to build the house? No, the architecture program is like DNA. It's the software. The hardware of a living thing is called epigenetic information. And in order to get a new oh, body my plan, gosh. you need to modify epigenetic information. The what? problem is if you try and modify epigenetic information early on in the embryonic process, this is horrible. the living thing dies. It's lethal. Oh, dear. This is the worst so thing this one is I've why seen yet. On November 7th, 2016, in London, the Royal Society called together a meeting and the premise of the meeting was the darwinian theory of evolution doesn't work we need to find a new theory so they all met there in 2016 they pointed out several problems with neo-darwinian theory and they didn't come up with a new theory because there isn't one okay so not only is the evidence for macroevolution weak in my opinion there's evidence against it, and I just gave you four. I could this go This is on. the worst one I've seen. Okay, so I don't think it works. But look, let's suppose macroevolution is true. Does that mean there's no God? No. no. Does that mean Jesus didn't rise from the dead? No. No. So even if it's true, it doesn't defeat Christianity. I so just why don't, don't you believe it? it's true it? based on the merits. And if macroevolution is true, the natural laws that drive it are still created by a lawgiver who created these laws and sustains them. So you're not getting rid of for, for, uh, you're not getting rid of God, even if it's true. So would you say? Uh, sorry to keep going, but would you say that uh, just the world probably developed for a few million years, and then God just put Adam in just a random set of time? Well, it wasn't <laughs> random according to God. Great question. Of course, I don't know when Adam came into existence. There's all sorts of different theories. William Lane Craig has a theory. He wrote a book called The Historical Adam, which I haven't read yet. William so Lane Craig, again, know. not a scientist. Um, there's a four views book on the historical Adam that's coming out. William Lane Craig is a contributor to it. I just got an email that it's coming out, but I haven't seen it yet because it's not out yet. So there's a lot of different views. But William Lane Craig's and not a scientist. Side you come down on, it doesn't defeat Christianity. Amen. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. I don't know why anyone's clapping. That was ghastly. That was absolutely awful. I don't know where to start. Well, no, no, I do know where to start, but good grief. Oh, dear. Just talk to a scientist. Talk to someone better. Um, okay, so, <laughs> right. We start with creation from the dust makes a lot more sense than natural laws. If you believe things can be created out of the dust, why don't you believe in abiogenesis? The idea that inanimate, non-living stuff can develop into living stuff? Surely you believe in both cases that it would be God who's creator anyway, who's sort of infusing it with life or some sort of vitalism. Um, yeah, that confuses me. Uh, you, you shut down one, absolutely, you call it nonsense. And the other one, yeah, absolutely fine. I don't get it. Um, macroevolution is false on the merits. The evidence is weak. There's evidence. Uh, uh, he doesn't believe in macroevolution because of the evidence against it. This, this is awful. Um, saying those sorts of things, you can only say that if you exclusively read intelligent design and creationist literature and you never read the scientific literature. The only way you could believe what he believes is if you never, ever read the scientific literature at all, and you only read intelligent design books. This video, and unfortunately he's got a big audience of young impressionable minds, is proof of what happens if you don't respect science, you don't love science, you don't read science, you only read propaganda books by people who you already agree with. Um, it's, this is a case study, a definition in being ideologically captured. Um, right. Let's go through his, his letters. L limited capacity for change. Uh, dogs are not a good example here. In fact, selective breeding is not a good example because in the origin of species, uh, Darwin highlights selective breeding is a very good example. Um, also limited space for change. The protein space is huge, absolutely massive. And intelligent design people use that as evidence against evolution. So, um, but he's saying there's a very limited capacity for change. I don't get that at all. Um, it, assuming he believes in an old earth, which he seems to believe, why is there not enough time 
uh, to do this. Also, you're forgetting here, evolution doesn't work in years. Evolution works in generations. Bacteria reproduce massively, have short lifespans, massive generations in a short space of time. Different animals, different creatures, um, their generations are, you know, some animals live to be very, very old, including us. Um, so his, his example is stupid. Um, irreducible complexity. Oh my goodness. So, um, he even cites the Michael Behe book, which he says was in 1996. Frank, you do realize that was 30 years ago, 30 years ago. And evolutionary biology, biology in general, has never been as hot as it is now. Just look at the recent Nobel Prizes, how they uh, converge and overlap. Um, irreducible complexity died at the Kitz, Miller and Tro Dover trial in 2005. It was debunked then in court. Why are you using this as a, as a reason? Irreducible complexity is dead. Um, he cites Richard Dawkins, which again is a tell that he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he's not citing modern evolutionary biologists. He's not citing modern evolutionary biology work or research or paleobiology. He's, re he's um, citing a popular science communicator. I love Richard Dawkins. His work is very good, but he's not an active researcher. It hasn't been for a very, very long time. His scientific output is not particularly large and not recent at all. So um, when you're saying Richard Dawkins is the example of the voice against, it just shows their ignorance. Unfortunately, that's a tell. Um, light sensitive cells are not irreducibly complex. Eyes are very, very well documented. Uh, the convergent evolution of eyes is very, very well understood. Light-sensitive photophores work just fine for rudimentary creatures, and you can see the line going from there to uh, eyes like our camera eyes. So um, this is just factually incorrect. I'm afraid what he said is not true. Um, F, the fossil record supports instantaneous creation. I don't know how you'd even know that, but... Um, but he's factually wrong. Animal life did not begin at the Cambrian. Uh, the Ed Ediacaran life shows animal forms pre-Cambrian. Um, and uh, they're rudimentary animal forms, and you can trace that line through the Cambrian pretty well. We have fossils of Ediacaran life um, in my office, like in, my, um, in the museum at the University of Reading. So... Yeah, um, he's just flat out wrong there. Uh, he's, he says um, that the fossil record is is just not there. Uh, what what planet are you living on? It's not Earth. Um, yes, Darwin said it was a problem 150 years ago, 160 years ago. A lot has happened since then. Why are you citing Darwin? Uh, there are great, more modern examples. Tiktaalik is one of my favorites. Um, um, Jerry Coyne writes in, in 2005, 20 years ago, that um, you know, evolution is predictive. It predicted there should be marsupial fossils in Antarctica, and lo and behold, they found them, um, which was incredible. Uh, and E, epigenetic information. Well, he, he just doesn't know what epigenetics is, evidently. Uh, he's talking about extra DNA, information outside of the genome is what he's talking about here. Uh, his analogy of software info to build a house and epigenetics being like the nails and the wood, that's a terrible analogy. It's, it's completely wrong. You know, when you're talking about epigenetics, you're talking about processes like DNA methylation, where basically, um, yes, it is extra DNA information. It's like basically a process that works like an eraser, adding or removing methyl groups. And, and there's this very, very interesting link. Um, it's a booming science right now between you know, trauma and things that people have, have suffered from, like the Dutch hunger strike, and that having an imprinting effect on future generations. He seems to think this is evidence against evolution. I, I, I don't know what universe you're living in there. Uh, but he, he mistakenly says that ep epigenetics is the lead for body plans. That is ridiculous. It's called Evo Devo. It's called developmental genetics, developmental biology. Um, something very, very well understood and something that is tremendous evidence for evolution. So that, that's just false, flat out false. Um, epigenetics is not what builds body plans. Evo Devo is what builds body plans. Um, and then there are a couple of tells here again at the end. Uh, he talks about this 200, two, uh, 2016 Royal Society meeting that happened in London where there was a debate about finding a new theory on evolution because neo-Darwinism doesn't work. 
Oh dear. Um, so firstly, this was not a meeting called by the Royal Society. It was a meeting funded by the Templeton Foundation, which is a religious foundation um, run by Dennis Noble, who is not an evolutionary biologist. He's a systems chemist um, to have a debate about this. And all the intelligent design people were invited. Um, so I'm a member of the Royal Society of Biology, and I'm actively involved in stuff that we do. I'm a member of the Genetic Society UK and an ambassador for them uh, with my university. We put on events and conferences all year round constantly about all different aspects of biology. And there are conferences every single year held about evolutionary biology, developmental genetics, epigenetics, all these things that he mentions. There are conferences constantly going on to debate and move forward and progress the science. And he's talking about one meeting funded by Templeton, run by a uh, religious believer to raise this as if it was some crisis point, as, as if in the Royal Society of Biology and the Genetic Society, we're not talking about this continually and constantly. There is no conversation about evolutionary biology being overthrown. There is no conversation in the Royal Society, in the Royal Society of Biology, in the Genetic Society, or anything like that, any other evolutionary biology group talking about it being overthrown or bad. The opposite is the case. Evolutionary biology is in its biggest boom since the 1950s because the data revolution from cheap, accurate, and fast gene sequencing is, is sparking this data revolution, is informing evolutionary biology more than it's ever been informed before. Um, Dave Farina, Professor Dave explains, has a uh, address this uh, legend of this 2016 meeting, and I will put a link in the description. Um, and finally, I just want to say, if if it's true, this, this comp dialogue he has with the student at the end, if it's true and it's not a threat to Christianity, why not believe it? Why not just believe what's true? Why not follow the evidence where it leads, like you Christian apologists, religious apologists always say, especially if it doesn't threaten your faith? Why are you not a theistic evolutionist? when the overwhelming scientific evidence points that direction and it's not a threat to your faith. Why not? Again, you can only believe what Mr. Turek, what Dr. Turek here is saying if you only read intelligent design literature or creationist literature and you never, ever bother with the science. It's a shame. I don't know why I put myself through this, but there we go. I hope that's helpful for at least some of you who might watch these things and be persuaded. Don't be persuaded. There are better answers out there pursue the truth, please. Thank you. Look forward to the next episode on Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more amazing conversations with incredible researchers who are changing the world we live in and driving humanity forward. Feel free to check out my Instagram at polymath underscore Sam or go to my website at www.sam-mckee.co.uk. 